Welcome to this episode of What's Crap on WhatsApp, the voice note show that investigates the crap shared in your WhatsApp groups. I'm Andesua May from podcasting company, Volume. And I'm Taryn Curry from Africa Check, the continent's leading fact-checking organization. Today we are changing things up a little. You asked for more claims in our voice note. So today we have four claims to investigate. Well, let's get to it. First up is a video showing a man identified as Ryan Cole, MD, claiming that all coronavirus vaccines make your body produce a spike protein, which he says is a toxin. Cole makes specific mention of the Pfizer, AstraZeneca, Johnson & Johnson and Moderna vaccines. He claims that the spike protein in them can induce cancer pathways. This name sounds familiar. Cole has made similar claims in the past, hasn't he? Correct and those claims have been widely debunked. He's also made headlines for prescribing ivermectin to COVID patients, a drug that hasn't been approved for treating the virus. And what about his claim that all the COVID vaccines cause your body to produce a toxic cancer-causing spike protein? So vaccines work by introducing the body to weakened or inactive parts of a virus. These fragments are largely harmless, at most causing a minor immune response. To trigger an immune response, most vaccines against COVID introduce weakened elements of or modified versions of the spike protein of SARS-CoV-2, the coronavirus which causes COVID-19. Studies show that the vaccine does not roam from its injection site and does not travel to any cell of your body, causing damage, as Cole claims. In addition to the fact that injections are administered in very small doses, there is no evidence to show that the vaccine versions of the spike protein are toxins or cause us harm. These claims by Dr. Ryan Cole are crap. RDP houses are free, so apply now. That's what several different posts doing the rounds on Facebook in South Africa are claiming. The posts link to a suspicious-looking website. When you click Apply, Another website opens with an article titled RDP Houses Online Application Forms 2022. Sounds dodgy. The Reconstruction and Development Program, or RDP, was the first socioeconomic policy introduced by the African National Congress, or ANC, government. While the policy is no longer in place, Government subsidized housing in the country is still widely known as RDP houses. So is the claim true? It's not. Those eligible for an RDP house should apply by visiting the Provincial Department of Human Settlements or their local municipality. And there are more criteria to qualify than listed in the social media posts, including earning less than 3,500 rand per month per household. In a tweet, the Gauteng Provincial Department of Human Settlements made clear the Facebook posts were spreading false information. Next up, a video of what appears to be the opening ceremony for a small footbridge has been widely shared online. It shows a group of people standing on the bridge and cutting a ribbon, just as the bridge collapses beneath them. I know this video. Africa Czech has seen several versions with claims that it was filmed in South Africa. But that's not true. International news organizations, including Reuters, Al Jazeera and The Guardian, have shared the clip reporting that it was filmed in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, or DRC. There is evidence in the video to confirm this. The woman who cut the ribbon in the video is, for example, wearing a t-shirt with the country's flag on it. The video shows the woman officially opening the bridge that had been sponsored by her non-governmental organization. According to a statement released by the organization, the video was filmed near Kinshasa, the DRC's capital city. The bridge collapsed in the DRC, not South Africa. This claim is also crap. Last up is a letter circulating on social media claiming that Zimbabwe's president, Emerson Mnangagwa, requested Buckingham Palace to allow him to attend the Queen's funeral, but was turned down. Ouch. This comes after the death of the UK's longest-serving monarch, Queen Elizabeth II, on 8 September 2022. According to the letter, the president's request to attend the funeral was rejected because Zimbabwe is under international sanctions and also because of concerns over human rights violations. 
The letter says only leaders invited personally by Elizabeth's eldest son, King Charles III, and leaders from the Commonwealth could attend the funeral. Zimbabwe abandoned the Commonwealth, a network of mostly former colonies of the British Empire, in 2003. We've seen a number of strange claims circulating in the wake of the Queen's death. Is this one true? Nope. The British Embassy in Zimbabwe's capital Harare posted the letter on its official verified Twitter account, stamping it fake. The caption reads, President Mnangagwa has been invited to attend the funeral of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II at Westminster Abbey on Monday. The letter below is fake. That's all the time we have for today. Now you know what's crap and what's not. Your friends and family can sign up for our show over WhatsApp. The number is 082-709-3527. Make sure to save us as a contact in your phone and send us a message. You can find the show wherever you get your podcasts, from Apple to Spotify. If you listen there, you'll find show notes and a link to the fact checks. Remember that you can send us a WhatsApp message, a picture, video link or voice note that you need fact checked. Just forward them to us on WhatsApp. Our theme song is composed by John Bartman. I'm Andesuame. And I'm Taryn Curry. Bye for now. Volume.